Ever since I did the NEC PC 98 tutorial, I've been wanting to return to the Japanese home computers because I think there's a little bit more mystery when it relates to these machines. We're talking about a small subset of a culture that's different from most of the rest of the world. So there are a lot of games in here that are unique to the system itself, or there are some pretty interesting ports to be had and a lot of games you don't need to know Japanese though there does exist some English translations as well. Hi my name is Brad and today on Unbroken Software Studio Tutorials I'll show you how to get the Sharp X68000 up and running in LaunchBox. So just like during the NEC PC 98 tutorial, you're going to head on over to this link and you're going to download the same emulator pack. If you've previously downloaded the emulator pack during the NEC PC 98 tutorial and you still have that complete download package, then you're good to go. If you didn't download it during the NEC PC 98 tutorial or you removed the other emulators in the pack, go ahead and re-download the pack to a location of your choosing. The file you're going to download is this .7-zip file, and you're going to double click it. You're going to take the Sharp X68000 folder, and you're going to drag it out into the folder that you've downloaded the 7-zip to or moved the 7-zip to. Inside this folder are going to be four folders, and inside of those are going to each be emulators of different various versions and forks and whatnot. The emulator that we are going to be focusing on today is the XM6 Pro 68K. Inside is a bunch of files and your XM6.exe. The games that I have downloaded uh, for the most part are .dim files, but uh, I did find a bunch of uh, English translated games uh, that were XDF files. If you need to apply the English translations yourself, you may need to find specific file extension games or different specific versions. Uh, I was lucky enough to find the, the pre-patched versions of these games. So over in LaunchBox with our games and emulator downloaded, we're going to go to Tools, Import, ROM Files. We're going to click Next. Then we're going to click on Add Files. You're going to want to navigate to where you have your uh, Sharp X68000 games. Since we're choosing files, I'm going to click on a file, Control A to highlight them all, and then click open. It's a really long list, so once it's finally done parsing through it, go ahead and click next. Platform for imported ROMs, we're going to type in the Sharp X68000, or you can choose it from the drop down list. If you want to name it something uh, custom, go ahead and name it something custom and then make sure that you choose the scrape as option as the Sharp X68000. Then we're going to click next where it says choose an emulator. It will most likely be empty for you. So go ahead and click add. You're going to go ahead and type in the emulator name. And in this case, it's the XM6 Pro 86K. Then you're going to click browse and you're going to navigate to where I showed you that XM6.exe. You're going to double click on it. You're going to go to the associated platforms tab. You're going to double click an empty space. You're going to type in Sharp X68000 or whatever custom platform name you gave it. Then you're going to go ahead and check the default emulator box as well and then click OK. Once you've got that set up, you're going to click next. Use the files in their current location. We're going to keep the box for the LaunchBox Games database checked, all the media boxes. It's going to log us into Emu Movies, and we're going to, of course, keep all of those checkboxes checked as well. We're going to look for PDFs, but we're also going to make sure that the box combine ROMs with matching titles into a single game is checked. And for a system that has many parts for a single game, this is very, very handy. Now, not every game may get combined, but for the most part, most of your games will be, and that is very, very good. So go ahead and keep that box checked, then go ahead and click next. If you don't like the list or you want to remove something, just go ahead and click on a game and then press delete to remove it from the list, or you can double click an entry to go ahead and rename it. Once you've got it set up, go ahead and click finish. Once you've got that set, go ahead and right click on a game and open XM6 Pro 86K. We're going to go to Tools, Options. 
where it says speed system clock, I'm gonna go ahead and select the 20 megahertz and then lucky in the brackets. Uh, if a game doesn't run properly or runs too fast, go ahead and lower down the megahertz to something more appropriate uh, until the game runs uh, as it should. The main RAM should automatically be maxed out, uh, but if it isn't, go ahead and select the 12 megabyte maximum here. And again, if you've already changed the system clock and it's something still not running right, go ahead and try changing the memory as well. Then you can go ahead and go through here and change a couple of the other options. Like I, I just preferred the blue LED over the uh, green LED. Uh, for the most part of fairly benign options they're fairly normal in what you would find in other emulators but let's head on up to joystick and here where it says port one uh genesis six button uh some games will work with some controllers but not others now i haven't found a universal controller uh yet but you can go ahead and play around with what might work for you uh, again, there might be a universal controller that every game will use, uh, but for the most part, I've seen some games use the Genesis 6 button controller. I've seen some games use the Atari plus start select. And then of course, there's always the keyboard and mouse options as well. With your controller plugged in where it says device A, go ahead and select your controller from the drop down menu. I've got my PS4 controller plugged in with input mapper installed. So the computer thinks that it's an Xbox 360 controller. And every time you change the type of controller in the port drop down here and you click set up next to your controller uh, these buttons will change so you can also customize it to your liking as well so let's go ahead and try to launch a game now let's go ahead and try undead line and you do you may notice that there are um, multiple floppy disks associated with some games so you may need to save state uh, when it wants you to swap disks and then load up the next disc, load your save states, that type of deal. Or you may also need to go over into the floppy drive one and select different floppy disks while the first floppy disk is opened or you may, you know, you may wanna swap back and forth. So you do want to keep your mouse handy uh, because sometimes you may need to manually swap disks if save state saving and save state loading is not working for you. But there you go, guys. That's actually a fairly simple tutorial for an old computer that's not even in English. I don't know how that happened, but that happened to happen today. I, I kind of like that. That's really cool. My name is Brad, and if this tutorial helped you out at all, then give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more tutorials and content in the future. If you like the sound of my voice, the link to my channel is below. I do lots of gaming content, so if that sounds like your cup of tea, head on over there and give me some love if you would like. If you support us over at our Patreon page at the producer level or above, then your name is now on screen. And thank you all very, very much. The support you give directly helps the entire Launchbox team make more and more awesome stuff. If you'd like to get your name in those producer credits, then head on over to the Patreon campaign link in the description below. Remember, freaks and geeks, to play more games, and we'll see you next time. Have a good day. Mm -hmm.